it is uh, said that uh, certain things that we're doing, uh, in fact, that uh, Paul introduced, uh, uh, will be out of date now, we're in the new nowness, and uh, everything is, uh, is new. So, um, with regards to chanting, um, with that to singing the, the, the new song, um, I see uh, there is no particular position to take, no particular posture. Uh, we are not folding our, we are not, our arms are not uh, on our laps, palms upturned, focus on spiritual eye, and, and all that. Uh, sit with a straight back and all that stuff. So we have the freedom to do as uh, as we as we choose. But then uh, there's this uh, new friend from from Africa. I think I've shared. Uh, should be Dida again or what? Yeah. Uh, he had this experience where after singing the the new song, uh, he meets. Uh, Representatives in the lotus position. Representatives is in that in that position, that lotus position. So, what significance has the lotus position or any other position uh, with regards to singing the new? And um, is it that uh, we should? Uh, uh, start uh, doing some what you call mudras, asanas in in Sanskrit postures uh, and all that because uh, if you if you can tell us what uh, this uh, representatives appearing in in lotus position. Uh, singing uh, the new to what what does it have what what is it telling us is it telling us that that position is good uh, that we should use it or what okay well what I'm seeing is is that Reba Zartars is demonstrating focus okay what's the idea of the lotus position it is to sit and focus, right? From your experience, yeah. Charles, are you there? I'm there, I'm there. Yeah, okay. So we'll go back and forth here. So again, it's a demonstration. I see that too. Most of the time when I'm with Rebusar, he's he's just basically standing. All right, so we're we're discussing or looking at something whatever so again it just it just depends upon the experience but uh, I would say for this individual uh, it demonstrates focus that's all it's not about see the personal self will think oh gee I'm to sit in the lotus position well that's choice but what is he really demonstrating and that is focus I see people on the real side and I uh, even People that I can know sometimes, and they, their eyes are every which way. They're going all over the place. They're not focused. It's a focus, looking straight ahead, you might say. And so I would say that's what he's demonstrating. So, yes, with the new presentation, it's kind of like this. All right, so whether you're lying down, standing on your head, swinging from a cloud, uh, or driving your car or whatever, uh, does that matter to the air you breathe? Does it matter to the sun shining? Doesn't, does it? Does this third eye matter to any of this? All these things that we've come to know? All these ideas, does it matter to any of this? No, it doesn't. And these realities that we have here in the physical demonstrate the isness. They really do. They're reflection. They demonstrate the isness. There's a demonstration all over the place. So. What's so cool about the new you is this is why I didn't specify anything, because this is what I see. 
and that is it's the whole of life seeing the whole but to see that you've got to go through the pieces and so again as people do the new you and they don't recognize what's going on they tend to go to those things they've come to know or other things where it seems as though people are having a, some kind of success with something, you see? All of a sudden, you know, you know a group of people that, uh, you know, they're chanting particular words or whatever. We don't chant. It's singing. It's, or it's, it's not chanting. But anyhow, um, and all of a sudden they're developing their psychic powers, etc it's like wow it looked like they're succeeding well again when you look at the whole of life when you look at the sun shining uh we'll just say creation here uh, the whole of life is invisible it's absolutely invisible more invisible than the air that you're breathing yes because it's awareness and it's all invisible and so as you enter the seventh level and above, well, there's, there's a type of form on the seventh level that's decided uh, to become so according to you. But as you move along, you might say, what you, there is no movement. It's all invisible. You, it's, a, it's a recognition uh, of what it is, what it already is, not what you decide it is. So, uh, but in the physical sense, you know, do any of these things have anything to do with any of that? They don't. You see, again, people chasing ideas. You see, this is what it's been. And this is why the world is like it is. And this is why everybody is still searching. You know, they think they've found something. They've found some little magic here or there. Guess what? You know, just like all the so-called uh, psychic sciences and all these things, they've all been invented They've all been invented off of whatever prophecy, predictions, uh, astrology, psychic phenomena, etc. You know, we're using the different uh, intuition is the etheric body. And that is closest to your real awareness. And so it is a struggle to see what the real guides are seeing. You see, it is. And at the same time, see, we're here. I see this. I see what they're seeing. I see what the is sees. But at the same time, I'm, I have a physical body, but I'm here as long as I'm here to do something for those that are struggling to see something. Because if what I've presented so far wasn't here, what would the world look to? The same old recycled stuff, and it would just get worse and worse and worse. That's what it's doing. Even what Paul presented, it only got worse, a whole lot worse, to where it's so infected with reptilians and tap lining. But people don't see this because they, they don't have the eyes to see it. They don't see what's going on in the real world, etc. And especially right in front of everybody, science has taken over technology and you got Wi-Fi and everything else almost destroying everybody. I know I have people that I know, they can't even get near the computer anymore because of the uh, the microwaves, etc. It's only getting worse. It ain't getting better. This is just how it is. Look at Mars and the other planets. They've already destroyed those planets. They're destroying this one. That's just very real. There's no la-la land here. It's not because of what I say. It's, hey, take a look at what's going on. Uh, there's a bigger picture here that's, that's going to be happening, too. So it's in process. But we'll see how that comes out, because, again, you have free will here. you got huge free will. So... Uh, yeah, it's very interesting, the situation we're in. So uh, you can sit any way you want, but I see it as focus, uh, Charles. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, and not uh, the old ways of whatever, but uh, a person can sit and, and do whatever. You, you have to give people the idea. Well, Paul, he gave many, he called them spiritual exercises. And realistically... Uh, the first one was is to sit and see the light, hear the sound, okay, of life. And basically, a lot of people look for the light. They want to be with the light. Well, the light that they were seeing was the astral light. That's knowledge. You're not going to see the real light. Most people won't because they, they can see it, but they're not going to recognize it. Now, you can have the astral light, and if you can recognize the isness through that, yes, it's, it's there. But for the most part, they're just going to recognize 
the knowledge that comes through. And this is where people, you know, they start accumulating the knowledge and it becomes very interesting. It becomes very easy for them to all of a sudden start to understand, like in Paul's day when Paul was writing what he did and presented it, the light uh, helped that. It's kind of like a flame uh, under the pan when you're cooking. You know, it's better than rubbing the pan to try and get it warm on the bottom as fast as you can with a rock or something. Well, the flame helps. And so this is how the light of the astral realm works. And this is where most people get, uh, you know, they just get, you might say, self-possessed by this light and the knowledge, thinking that they've hit the ultimate, just like many people when they astral project think that's the soul body. Some people think the intuition is the soul, etc., but it's not the real you. No, it's just another body. It's just another vehicle. So, again, from this uh, this angle here, this particular personal view, we have these ideas. And really, uh, it is learning to focus. And, you know, what's so cool about this is it's not a stare. Okay, it's not like you stare at, uh, you know... Uh, a star out there in the darkness. Okay, there's one star, you stare at it, all right? And that could be a technique too. But now it becomes the whole of life. You see, there is no staring. It's a matter of recognition, recognizing the whole, more so than the pieces while you're, you, while you're dealing with the pieces in creation. Nothing is negated. Nothing at all. Everything is workable. It's just how you see it. And you decide to pick and choose how you feel. But again, uh, yes. Uh, See how easy it is to when something like that is demonstrated and it's choice. It's like now all of a sudden uh, it can be that he can have a group there and it's like uh, he decides, okay, everybody sit in a lotus position. See, so uh, but I would say, no, it's not that at all. But you decide. You decide what it is. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you for that answer. Uh, I find that um, the whole world seems to be engaged or is actually engaged uh, in a fight with uh, the East. I see uh, this fight. This fight is raging, and uh, they want me to, to to predict a victor. It is uh, it is the ace. So what uh, what can you say about this uh, senseless battle with the ace? I will find all around. On what channel on TV is that? Is that the latest <laughs> news? <laughs> My private channel. <laughs> How did you come up with this, Charles? Uh, <laughs> just by observing. Okay, give me an example. An example of... uh, An example is uh, people's uh, uh, preoccupation with what is, uh, let me say, what is past and gone. Instead of focusing on the present and uh, to see what... uh, Possibilities uh, this moment holds, you see, and uh, how they can how they can use it uh, to 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 better life and to to to, to move ahead in life, to move ahead with their with their life. So. People seem to be to be stuck. There's just one example I'm giving. People seem to be stuck in the past, while life uh, marches on. 
and uh, there's this uh, resistance uh, all around and uh, there's a lot of suffering there's a lot of anguish because of uh, this what I called uh, what I just termed uh, a war with uh, the East so I it just dawned on me yesterday when I was coming back from school, I said, oh, war with the East. So I said, no, I would, I would, uh, I would like you to talk some more about this. It's Again, it's just really choice. Here's the idea, and that is, do people want to keep the view they've always had, or do they want a new view? And so you have to explore. And how do you do this? So the uh, what we're talking about and what uh, I've written as references uh, gives the hint. That's all it can do. So uh, you know uh, that's up to the that's up to the individual. Yeah, it would seem like it's a battle or a war. Well, it's really with ourselves. We really decide: do we want a new view, or do we want to just see things as we always have? and do what we always have, you see? So it's like a builder, you know. And I was a builder. I was a general contractor for 40 years. And so uh, do I want to just keep building the same houses? Do I want to just keep building and building, you know? And uh, I decided, no, I don't. At some point, I decided that for a while that was fine, you know, or while I was doing uh, things with the corporation, which... Paul I created, etc. At that time, for many for many years, for over thirty years, and for that time, it was fine. But it came to a point where no, uh, I want a new adventure, a new life, and a new view. So it's a decision, isn't it? But uh, I've seen it through the years. I would say that uh, again, it's choice. People make a choice. And for most most people, they will go back to their personal life. You still have your personal life. This is what people don't get, is, is that you still got your personal life, you know, but you decide how to enhance it. And so for the most part, what people will do, they'll, they'll just put all this aside. And just like in book two, uh, the girlfriend I had at the time, Heather, uh, at a certain point, she decided that it was, no, I want to go back. And uh, this is all illusion. These guys are dead or whatever whatever her idea was. Uh, and so, uh, you know, people decide their lives. They decide however it is, and that's how it's going to be. So the whole of life, yeah, that's a biggie. That's a challenge. That's always going into the unknown and becoming unknown, really. You, you really do. The only reason that, uh, you know, that uh, Reva's are and the boys and whatever are here, mainly for me, Simply because, uh, you know, what Joni has done with Harry, especially with Harry, little by little pushing them out. You see, she knows that she still has to use Paul as the founder. OK, but realistically, that's not the focus. That becomes the difference. See, she's just using that just like uh, if you go to the White House, you see pictures of the presidents, you know, George Washington and all that. <clears throat> Uh, Abraham Lincoln, what have you, uh, Roosevelt, all these things like carved in Mount Rushmore. You know, these people don't care about any of that. They sincerely don't for the most part. Some of them do. Maybe they're a little history, historians or, you know, they got a little sentimental attitude. But for the most part, they don't care. That's just marketing. You got to you got to use something, you see. And so what I do, I put these individuals forward where, uh, you know, the other paths that have been created, the, the Denami, the Varden Car, the, you know, which I've mentioned many times, and they, they get upset with me when I say this. Uh, what's the idea? Oh, they got the rod of power. They're the master. They're the 972nd, whatever. Whatever is fine. Have fun. Uh, you can do whatever you want. That's not the idea. I put everything uh, before me. Uh, I'm just... Uh, I feel grateful. It's all about gratitude with me that I even know this. And so the whole of life is bigger. It's not about me. But uh, Ava and I market ourselves the way we do. It's the new man, the new man is, etc. Simply because we simply represent. 
these individuals, and you might say keeping them alive here. So by the very fact we do that, they support us. And this is why the real guides don't support Harry and Varden Carr and Denami and Scientology and the Way of Truth and John Roger Hinkins, and I go on and on, Messiah, all these things, even though they may mention these things. Because realistically, they see the intent of these individuals, just like they see the intent of the politicians and the religious paths, etc. They see the intent, so they don't touch them. They don't back them. Life doesn't back it. You're just like floating in space like a satellite. It's your own idea you're clinging to. They don't back it, even though their <clears throat> name, excuse me, their names may be in the book somewhere. But they see that as marketing ploy. That's what Harry does, you know. He uses these things. And people do in the corporation and many places have experiences with them. This is very real. But it, And they can think that, oh, this has to do with, uh, you know, the Ekin Carr or Varden Carr or whatever. It doesn't. It deals with the individual. It doesn't mean that the boys back that. No, they're backing what we're doing. Because uh, it's real. We're, we are, our intent, our sincerity, it's very real. And this is showing up. It has for years and years and years through the experiences of others. And uh, it's, you know, you've shared some recent experiences, et cetera. Uh, there have been many, many more. And anyone can see it on the real side if they're sincere. It, it'll be shown. And some people do pay attention. So, uh, again, it's a... Uh, it's a very interesting example of uh, what we're going he through here. And uh, again, it's choice. Uh, I don't see any battle of anything, but I mean, those ideas come up and it's interesting you share those, Charles. But uh, the only battle is, is that the individual with themselves, we all battle ourselves in our own way because it's the personal self, because we have cause and effect here and it's agitation. And realistically, you don't see the sun battling anything. You don't see the air or whatever, or the sea, even the ocean battling anything, simply because uh, it's not the same as us with uh, the different sides of ourselves, etc. So uh, these ideas can come up, but realistically, they're not. It's more fun to focus on the natural environment and do something creative that makes sense, especially now with the huge demise of this planet, to take on the challenge to step up and. Uh, this is where, when we all get together, we do something fun and uh, see what happens. But, uh, yes, thank you for asking, Charles. Uh, I know it's a lot for you to, to bring these things up and figure out, but it's I appreciate it. Because it activates certain things so people can get a better understanding. But the bigger picture is, is to learn to recognize uh, the whole of life more so than just creation. But with creation involved also. So it all implies, yes. Yeah, then, thank you.